Today we're going to take a sneak peek into one of the uh, best developments soon to be released in Belt Analyst version 16. I'm looking here at the uh, input of geometry and in great improvements that's been made in, in uh, setting up your geometry and accurately uh, inputting the pulleys and getting the pulley wraps correct and even uh, now uh, inputting uh, vertical curve radiuses automatically. So I'm looking at a screen here which is in uh, auto return which is the base standard mode that's been around in belt analyst since the beginning. You see here we have seven flights on the carry side, horizontal links and vertical lifts, either spacing, we can see where the load is and um, we have a head pulley, a few bends to take up, and a tail pulley. Um, so at this point we can do a lot of our calculations, but the geometry is not in totally accurately at this point. So we're going to now hit on the advanced user tab and say yes. And uh, we're going into an advanced input mode. If I look down here now, I've got a split screen with my uh, grid information at the bottom and a graphic uh, representation of our conveyor at the top. Uh, if I scroll down here, you can see that the program has automatically put some return flights in between all the pulleys and uh, added a couple columns here for pulley diameter and curve radius and also X and Y coordinates for the point. So we still have our horizontal lift and our, and our vertical lift, horizontal length and our vertical lift, uh, but now we have X, Y coordinates and uh, some other input items. So let's uh, let's zoom in here first to our uh, to our profile. And I'm just going to scroll up here with my mouse and uh, pan over, and you can see that uh, the program has uh, put a little piece in here between the drive pulley and the uh, bin pulley. But now I can click on the bin pulley, and I can easily move that around where I'd like it to be. I can also uh, you see the 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 line representing that bin pulley is now highlighted here in my grid, so I can uh, change the pulley diameter if I'd like. Uh, and you can see the X, Y coordinate for the center of that uh, bin pulley at this point. Um, I can uh, also scroll, or let's, let's zoom back here a little bit and let's scroll along. Um, and actually we can come down here to the uh, grid and actually uh, zoom over here to the take up and I'll scroll in you can see that it puts some pieces of belts between the pulleys for represent the take up but it didn't do it correctly uh, obviously but very easily now we can click on these pulleys and we can move them around very easily configure them the way we want them and um, at the same time I can look at the uh, links and lifts and the centers, the points, this points is the center of the pulley. Uh, change the pulley diameter right down here. Uh, let's change the pulley diameter on the take up pulley. And you see as I click on it in the grid, the, the graphic goes right to that pulley. Um, I want those uh, two vertical pieces to be uh, completely vertical, so make them Make sure they're zero horizontal length. Do that one again. Okay, we got them. I uh, got them the way we want them. Zoom out here a little bit. Uh, maybe go back here to the uh, tail pulley. Zoom in on that. Make sure it's the way we want it. Set the set the diameter very easily. I hit zoom all. You can see the whole thing. I can click uh, zoom to and zoom in on, oops, on specific pieces. Zoom to. Um, so very easily, I can actually zoom go all the way around the conveyor just by clicking through the flights. If you happen to. Uh, uh, if you want to check, and we'll zoom in here to one of our vertical curve locations. Uh, I'll click on select. I can select a flight. Let's say I've got one of my flights out of whack a little bit. 
and it's a very pretty difficult to do that anymore but if I have it all out of whack I want to check I can hit preferences hit check flight geometry and actually shows me here that I got a problem I can kind of zoom in and see that uh, well I got a flight there that's overlapping each other and so I can correct that and see everything's black which means the flights aren't overlapping each other anymore um, there is an option here if you if you'd like to have all your return flights to be let's say exactly one meter below the carry flights I can uh, create uh, lock points and uh, drag my return and it snaps into place one meter let's make that 0.75 three quarters of a meter 750 millimeters and you can see here I can snap that in place and as a matter of fact I can hit uh, uh, match all return flights and it'll go around and it'll snap all the return flights in place so if I go look at my curves at this point you see all of them are snapped together in place and I can do the same thing on the carry side and pick those points if I like all right what else can I do here um, if I want to see what my wrap angles are I can actually turn on pulley wrap angles and now as I move my pulleys you can see the wrap angles immediately and so if I wanted to have 105 degrees of wrap I can if I'm very careful I could get that right on 205 degrees of wrap or close to it or I can turn that off if I like I can turn on flight labels which gives me the labels for all the elements and the flight arrows show me the carry direction on the belt I can also change the starting point so right now my XY coordinates is starting at 0 0 if I wanted to match this up to a, a drawing and my starting point was uh, 100 200 I can shift and all my XY coordinates uh, are shifted to reflect the starting point of my conveyor which is always um, back here uh, right there at the tail pulley right here is always the starting point of the conveyor okay zoom all select let's say we uh, uh, let's uh, let's zoom in on the take up here go take a look at the take up and I'd like to uh, um, increase the um, the drop there on my take up so let's pick a let's pick this flight which happens to be the one of the vertical belts and I want to change that to uh, four meters of drop and you can see it actually moved the other the, the wrong pulley up a little bit instead of the take up pulley but that's okay I can simply uh, select my two pulleys that I want to move and drag them both into place very easily matter of fact I can even uh, grab all three pulleys and shift the take up up or down and uh, snap it into position wherever I like okay let's uh, let's say we'd like to uh, uh, let's go up here to somewhere between the drive and the take up and uh, I want to actually change the take up into a horizontal gravity take up horizontal gravity take up which means I need a couple more uh, pulleys in here so I can use the cut flights and I'm gonna draw a line there where I want the flights to be cut and it, see there that it adds uh, points where I cut them and now I can uh, convert those points to pulleys let's uh, let's do that and now I can change the wrap angle on that pulley move this pulley over make it a horizontal gravity drop this pulley down change the wrap direction 
and move these around a bit and uh, I've got horizontal gravity take up instead of vertical take up just that simple I can come down here and fix my pulley diameters of the two pulleys I just added very quickly um, if I happen to input a pulley diameter that's smaller than it should be due to uh, the belt construction or whatever you can see it it turns red lets me know that I'm too small and I can always come over here to the uh, pulley chart and see what's why it turned red but it's the pulley diameter in this case um, I can blank that out and uh, it'll come back to the uh, minimum default value or I can input another number there as long as it's blue uh, I know that pulley diameter is okay for the application okay um, I can also um, very quickly if I want to uh, move or re redefine my pulleys for instance if for some reason I wanted to make that a drive pulley I simply say convert to drive pulley and all the calculations has been done I now have uh, two drive pulleys in my system and I can very easily whoops very easily click on that drive pulley and convert it back to a to a regular pulley and you can see the uh, drive pulley is now gone away I only have one drive pulley um, you can also if you want to uh, define the take up pulley as a different pulley for some reason you wanted this pulley to be the take up pulley you set the take up and let's let's do a little moving around here and uh, um, change the wrap angles and the green here is the take up pulley so I really don't want that pulley to be there so let's delete it it made a, it turned it into a point I can delete that point and I can come back and say okay I'd like a pulley to be there select that point convert it to a pulley and I've switched my take up around the other direction very quickly and again if I want to move this I can highlight all of this and move the whole thing up or down the conveyor okay another uh, very nice new feature happens to be the vertical curves and adding them to the profile so if I come over here to preferences and add vertical curves you can see the vertical curves that have been calculated have been uh, added um, and let's zoom into one of these and you can see the curves have been laid in may not be accurate yet but let's click on one of these flights let me zoom in a little bit more click select and you can see the radius that's been selected on the return turn flight here is uh, 462 meters and on the carry side it's been it's 103 meters so let's uh, uh, let's uh, go over here to the uh, curves tab so it's number curve number four and uh, curve number 24 so I can come over here and I can look and see curve number four has been set um, and everything is appropriate 103 curve number 24 465 and that has to do with uh, uh, probably the load rating on let's see what happens if I change this to 110 which would match the carry side more closely you can see it's load on the idlers the idler spacing is a little too much so I'm actually going to come over here and uh, let's uh, let's set the idler spacing at uh, I'm going to set it at 125 meters. You see the radius 
adjust. I'm going to set this one to 125 meters as well. So the two radiuses are the same. It's still yellow, uh, which means I really like to snug up the idler spacing on this. So I'm going to hit this create tangent points. You can see two additional points have been added and I'm going to uh, reduce the idler spacing in these two flights representing my vertical curve and now the 125 radius is acceptable and the radius is acceptable on the carry side and I can also create these tangent points on the carry side as well if I'd like to and now I have my two curves uh, well defined. I can do the same thing for uh, any of these curves. So we'll pick this curve. I'm going to set this one now at the return. I'll make it 500 and I'll just set the carry side the same. I want them to be the same and I can set tangent points if I'd like and I can go through all of them this way. Now one of the nice things about this is you can see I have two concave curves setting here side by side and before I really didn't know until I went to AutoCAD program but you can see I've got the two curves are overlapping in other words they don't fit here's the tangent point for this curve to the left and here's the tangent point to the curve to the right so they physically don't fit um, the way I've uh, I've set up my conveyor so I can grab these points actually let's let's uh, let's grab a couple of points here a couple of these curves and I'm gonna I'm gonna move it over and grab this point move it over and see if we can get the two curves to not be intersecting. And you can see here they still are. I'm going to go over to this curve and move these points. And uh, you can see now I've actually got the two concave curves so they're, they're not overlapping each other. I think they're not overlapping each other now. Actually, they still are. And now they're, they're not overlapping each other anymore. So I can come in and, and set the radiuses. 250. Let's set the return radius at 200 and looks like make it 260. 260. And I'll come back to this radius over here and set it at 260 as well. And now that I've enlarged them a little bit. I need to uh, probably go back here and make sure they're still not intersecting and uh, they're still okay. Okay, so I could go through and do that on all my curves and very easily um, set up my entire conveyor. I can come back over here and I'll flip this on and check real quick to see that I don't have any geometries uh, falling over each other. Um, but it looks like I've got everything pretty well set up the way I want it. And then I can go on and design the rest of my conveyor.